University of Nebraska-Lincoln researchers have been studying the potential of sensor-based nitrogen fertigation in corn. The sensors can help scientists find possible plant stress, then use an irrigation system to apply nitrogen. Those applications during the season could also minimize nitrogen losses, since they occur while a crop is growing in the field. The results indicate the sensor-based methods might be able to help farmers be more profitable and efficient than they would by using UNL's earlier recommendations. Nebraska Extension's Brian Cranky joined us earlier this week to give more background on the project. The reason we're doing this sensor-based fertigation is to look for new uh, methods to improve our nitrogen management in corn. There are several areas in the state where nitrate has become a concern and it's, it's well noted in those communities. And so what we're trying to do is be proactive and find ways that we can help these growers better manage their nitrogen. How are you getting the sensor-based information that you're using to try to time applications? We're using handheld sensors on our research study, but it can extend to uh, handheld sensors. It could be a UAV sensor. So far, satellite sensors are not uh, appropriate for what we've been looking at. But basically, we use the sensor and we monitor weekly after a certain growth stage, and that's how we decide when we should fertigate or add nitrogen to the corn. This is an interesting response in that you found that sensor-based nitrogen fertigation is more profitable and more efficient than just what? A normal way that a farmer would do it? So we've been comparing against our previous best management practice that we've had for a number of years, which is the UNL algorithm. That's a hand calculated number that you decide before the growing season begins and it's based on a number of credits uh, such as legume credit from your soybeans perhaps or nitrate in the soil or your water. So we're trying to get to a method that instead of pre-calculating how much you may need in a given season, figure out how much we need as we go throughout the season. So that changing weather conditions or the growing season environment is always going to be different. This allows us to adapt to that growing season and only apply as much as needed. The, uh, the fields that had the sensors, that used the sensors, they weren't always the highest yielding. Is that important? No, that, so that's a great point, Jeff. When we're managing with nitrogen, managing with nitrogen, over applying nitrogen will always get you to that maximum yield level. We're not managing for maximum yield. We're managing for efficiency and profit. And if those two are positive, then we think that's a win-win. And so it's not important that we lose a couple bushels on a given treatment if the efficiency is gained and the profit is maintained or increased. So by how much did you increase profit or efficiency? So that varies, obviously. Um, we're using prices before the season begins, and depending on how you calculate application costs, that can vary greatly. But we've seen as much as up to $60 per acre increase for using a sensor-based fertigation over a standard UNL algorithm treatment. But that, keep in mind, that is on three site years of research. And it factors in the use of the sensors? So far, no. That's, that's why I said there's a lot of caveats to that. Um, it does not factor in the cost of the sensors, although they are fairly low priced if you want to do this in a kind of an averaging basis versus a very site-specific use of these sensors. Your trials were in Clay Center and at the West Central Research and Extension Center in North Platte. Is there a reason this wouldn't be applicable in other situations or areas? That's a great opportunity to learn more. We, we know that it works well in these two areas, and those areas are quite different, uh, just comparing between the two. The soils at Clay Center are heavier soils, uh, more mineralization potential typically um, than North Platte, which also has a more coarse textured soil to allow uh, such losses as leaching. So what we really need to do is take this on farm and go to areas that are mainly affected by the nitrate issue and see how well it works in those areas. You said this might eventually be a best management practice for corn producers. What's standing in the way of that? So it might be because we need more data. And it's easy to say that uh, to, to be cautious, but until we see data in these regions that are mainly affected by the nitrate issue, I would not feel confident telling all growers that this is a method that is guaranteed to work. We do have data though from years past from uh, the Haskell Ag Lab, which was a little different scenario, and it also showed positive results. But 
Because it's not the exact same method that we're doing in this study, I don't want to make direct comparisons to say this would be applicable on any given sandy soil, for example.